Hey, Luke, thanks for joining us. How are you? Yeah, great, thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks. So um, tell us, how did you uh, like end up in this uh, Amazon universe? Like, what, what have you been doing before and you know, how was your yeah, path? Sure. Uh, even from when I was maybe like 15, 16, I was playing around with um, online websites and like affiliate side of things and sort of say it, selling, but it was all just off my own sort of instincts and not really any knowledge or you know understanding of anything that was going on. And I sort of tried things over the years or I researched a lot because I really I wanted to, I did business at university basically and I wanted to figure out a way to go into it for myself. Um, but I didn't want to just force something that I just, just to start my own business. I didn't want to force anything. So I sort of got a job like most people do, um, mainly in the finance area, just whatever sort of came up, did that for maybe four or five years. But I always knew there was, I wanted to do something online if I could. Um, and over the years, I sort of researched things, looked on that, um, look, you know, I knew you could sell on Amazon as like a third party seller. I didn't really understand it. And, I, and then slowly but surely I looked at private label and then I, uh, this was all on sort of on YouTube and also people that were already doing it. And then I looked at sort of reselling on YouTube, um, and just kept watching hours and hours of videos. Then I was like, right, I'm going to get, you know, the basics to start and just started it part time. Mm -hmm. mainly selling second-hand products um, on Amazon um, because if you find the right items there's a lot of demand for sort of older older things that mm -hmm. maybe like, not, not necessarily vintage or such but just older things that people want to go back to maybe like old consoles or games mm -hmm. uh, like sort of Super Mario and that sort of thing uh, and then slowly progress to actually reselling um, obviously new products where um, wholesale and all that sort of area um, and now I do it full time. I've been doing that for four years now. Oh, wow. And that's sort of like, you know, that's, that's sort of my core business, but I do a lot of other areas, which may be like coaching, helping people get into the area mm -hmm. um, uh, and sort of giving guidance and, and you know, videos on how, through my YouTube channel on how to even go about starting your own um, reselling mm -hmm. um, business on Amazon. Very cool. Look, um, so um, that sounds, sounds interesting. I have actually a lot of questions about every every single step but um uh one question uh before that so you're mainly focused on um amazon uh, uk right or are you selling it is, you, I, I do sell in europe um but because there's you know there's there's been a lot of sort of changes around the whole brexit side of things because obviously we're the uk and i don't do pan european which is um mm -hmm. you know where you store your stock in their countries i just do it um efn european fulfillment network um so the core of a business is the UK and I may do maybe five to eight percent of my sales in Europe, maybe up to 10, maybe at Christmas time. But the majority of it is, um, is the UK. Okay. That, that sounds cool. Look, you mentioned secondhand. Um, I, I actually never um, talked to anybody who was uh, selling secondhand. So tell us more about this. How does this even work? Can, I, can you, you can obviously sell secondhand sure. on Amazon, right? But um, that's not so, so obvious to most of people, I believe. Yeah, I mean, it's more maybe on new products, uh, like day-to-day -day products, there's not really going to be anything, you know, if you're buying a laptop or something, um, because most of the time they're, people want brand new and, and a lot of people don't really go about selling that sort of thing. But I started off selling, I was, I was going on, you know, like something like Facebook Marketplace um, and looking for things that I knew about, which was like video games and that sort of thing from my childhood. So I, was, I sort of knew what they were, what was the best, best out of the bunch. Um, and I was, I was almost putting a massive list through of, of places to collect. And I was going and doing a big day's worth of like different stops, collecting lots of secondhand goods that I, you know, I put a bid in that I knew was sort of worth it. I would compare on Amazon um, what I could, you know, what I could make in terms of profit compared to the items I was buying. Um, and as long as that was making me some money, I would collect them from the, the house. I'd normally go and collect it, just drive down, maybe even a day trip, mm -hmm. collect it up, um, list them all on Amazon a second hand uh, and do it that way. Because if you actually look at sort of older products, maybe like Super Mario, um, some of the you know, Nintendo DS or the Nintendo you know, 3DS, which are slightly older versions, because obviously the Switch is the sort of newer one. And there's yeah. a lot of second hand games that you can, pick up, you know, you can sell for much cheaper than brand new. And a lot of people don't mind yeah. um, 
because it's still the game, you know, it's not going to change anything um, in terms of that. So mm. you can buy it for a couple of quid, sell it for, you know, 10, 12 quid, but actually brand new, maybe 24 99 yeah. um, in pounds. Sorry. Mm. And you're able to make some decent money. Um, but then, you know, it's, it's not massively scalable because you are, it's a lot of time commitment involved. So over the, over the, you know, over the, um, the years and the months, I've sort of transitioned through to the more online side of things um, where I'm working from home. Okay. So you're not, um, you're not doing it anymore um, at all, right? No, I'm not. But hmm. I do know there are successful, like, you know, booksellers um, and they've been doing it many years. I went to an event uh -huh. not long ago, um, like an online arbitrage summit, a UK, you know, these, this guy um, organized it and there was a speaker and he sold used books and that's all he all he would sell and the fast sellers he would send to fba and the slower sellers he would just do merch and, and he would have uh -huh. a sort of a bookshelf at his home and it and he could actually make you know hunt thousands of percent roi return on these products uh -huh. um, because he built up a good knowledge of what books um he could pick up from charity shops is what he mainly did and, and then would flip it onto amazon so tell me, how does this uh, second-hand thing uh, work on Amazon? Is it just just like the new products, but uh, you need to tag them as uh, second-hand? Uh, so, or uh, is there anything sure. else? It's, it's, it's pretty much, yeah, it's quite simple. You, you, when you list the product, you, it mainly selects as new, I believe, when you go to... Um, so what you do is you're piggybacking on the listings that are already there more than creating a listing, um, because most of those items are already exist. Um, and then you will select used or you, so there's different options. There's like, um, like new, um, good average. I think I haven't looked for a long time, but you know, you, you, you select the sort of quality, um, and then you select the price, um, and you can still like, you know, use rep reprices to reprice these sort of things, but you're able to really, there's not always a lot of competition, um, because people don't necessarily, well, that isn't the first thing that a lot of people go to. And because of the quality as well, if you can get almost like new products, um, mm -hmm. but you're able to sell it for half the price of a, of a new product, yeah. um, yeah. that's where it's sort of, um, mm -hmm. yeah. This and what about important. like the, the shipping? Did, did you mostly ship them through FBA or does it even work? Like, uh, yeah, so everything I used to do was FBA. I, I mm -hmm. tried Merchant Fulfill on a handful of products just to see, but everything could be done exactly the same as you would do mm -hmm. um, it, it, it literally would just say uh, on the on the barcode um, label that you put on. It would just say use instead of new. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, everything else is exactly the same. Okay, interesting. And uh, the, I assume the fees are exactly the same, right? Yeah, I I can't remember off the top of my head now because it's like four years back. But mm -hmm. uh, I do remember the sort of referral fees uh, and that were almost. I think mm -hmm. on some some of the items it was half, but I think mm -hmm. that was more for the category than it was the the, the because it was actually a used product. Mm -hmm. Okay, very interesting. But like, I mean, it, it, would, it would be, I guess, a very scalable idea if you find a way to source uh, these items online, like on eBay or something like this. Yeah, um, I, I'm right. sure there are ways. There are, you know, there, there must be, like, like anything you put your mind to it, you can find a way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and there are people that were looking to, they, you could ship, you could get people to ship. Mm -hmm. um, you could probably scale it. Um, because you could do, you could then move on to stuff like eBay and get second house up off eBay where it's slightly more expensive, but if you were doing volume, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's like anything you do volume, enough volume, you can sort of bring your margins down a little, um, and you could, you could scale it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very cool. But, um, okay. So let's move on. And then you moved on basically into reselling and what kind of reselling, um, is like online arbitrage or retail arbitrage or. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so from the second hand, I then moved to retail arbitrage. Um, mm -hmm. it just seemed to be how it was done, the transition. Um, and I actually got really into it. You know, I sort of like anything you got a good knowledge base of how it works, how to mm -hmm. do it, where to go. Um, and I even do trips, you know, you can go away for a couple of nights and you just, just drive and do a big, you know, route, mm -hmm. uh, which is quite fun as well. You know, it gets you out of the house and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and, over the you know over the years because obviously the capital built up there's only so much, again with one person there's only so much you can yeah. buy in a day almost um you know it's very difficult to spend two three four thousand pounds or even up to ten you know when it comes to q4 i could be spending 20 and 30 and mm -hmm. those sort of numbers aren't really they don't really work with retail arbitrage but the profits are higher so you know it, it depends on what your goals are as such if you just do it part-time which you know there are people that do it they might work on the week they do it on the weekends 
and that's mm-hmm. that's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the people that want to do it a bit more full time and, and push on from there, and even move away from Amazon later, or um, you know, move them to private label, be you know, really most people would move to on the online arbitrage mm-hmm. side, just literally buying um, online somewhere, uh, and you make the margin in between uh, where you can sell it on Amazon for more. Yeah. Okay, a couple of questions about retail arbitrage. So for those who don't know what this is, this is basically buying goods offline at a discount, uh, maybe at a, at a local store and then uh, sending them to Amazon to sell them through FBA. And then you need a sort of a process how to find uh, a good deal. Um, so there's actually there's an app, Amazon provides an app, uh, which you can use to scan a product and it will tell you uh, what's the, the retail price on, on Amazon. And then you can kind of see um, if, if it's worth to buy this. But uh, one question that we get very often is um, uh, in invoices. So sometimes Amazon, depending on what you're selling, if you're selling like branded products, you might want to um, or might need to show them an invoice uh, just to prove that it's an authentic product. So um, did did you have such uh, requests from Amazon? How did you solve it? I've never I've never had that before, mm-hmm. uh, but I I do you know I, I have a Facebook group and a lot of people do post um, mm-hmm. questions even if they're just more curious, mm-hmm. and it is quite important to keep sort of a very um, like professional receipt management almost. You've got to be very vigilant in that mm-hmm. sense um, because it's very easy to lose your receipts. Definitely when you're mm-hmm. buying it from a store, mm-hmm. um, but you can a lot of the time. I know many people that have used the receipts from, let's say, Tesco's or you know a supermarket, and that has been fine. Um, but you, like Amazon, you know, with anything, you do find there are instances that people, in one scenario, provide something, and then someone would do exactly the same in another scenario, and it mm-hmm. doesn't always pan out the same. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it, it's just, it is the same as like online arbitrage and, and that sort of sense. Um, but as you move towards that way, um, you are able to get more professional invoices. Um, because you were able to get it off sort of the head office rather than mm-hmm. I think a lot of the retail receipts you have to go to that specific store mm-hmm. if you want to get like a proper VAT invoice and that sort of thing so it's a, li- a lot more time you know intensive yeah um, but but in general just, like if you if you shop offline in the UK you get a, an invoice uh, in the store you'll get, you'll get the receipt but you can yeah. um, you can go and request um, okay uh, you basically go to the customer services and, and yeah. say what you're looking for okay you can give them your company address and, and say yeah and they normally and they will... will go in and they take that receipt and they're basically give you yeah refresh okay i got it all right and then you move to online arbitrage so so um how does this work uh, basically sourcing goods online and selling them on mm-hmm. an amazon through fba for those who don't know but like how um how does this work in uh in uk so what what's the process um yeah so you know there's, there's many sort of there's no exact way to do it but you know roughly it will be you you will go and find so there's a lot of like sourcing softwares and services that you can mm-hmm. subscribe to or you can just do manual um mm-hmm. copy and paste mm-hmm. um just go to one website find a product you know maybe it's on sale maybe it's 50 percent off so at christmas you know because it's been christmas we've been quite a lot of good off um good offers and sales on mm-hmm. you'll find some products you'll then compare it to amazon and usually if Amazon aren't selling the product, because usually their products are very competitively priced, so you're, you're sort of stay clear of that. Um, find the products that you're more sort of general third party sellers. Uh-huh. Um, and there's lots of Chrome extensions you can use to figure out your profits and, and you know, your margins. And just going through the, the different items that there are and finding which ones are worth basically buying. You get them delivered, uh, delivered to your house if you, if you work from home, or you can use a third party prep center where they're obviously, they label it and prep it for you yeah. and then send it in on your behalf or you'll send it into FBA. Yeah. And you're then, most of the time they set their prices depending on how much they bought it for and, mm-hmm. and sell it that way. Okay, so um, we, um, we've we talked to some guys who are doing that in the US. Um, okay. So my first question about UK is, uh, like, does this uh, business model make sense? Is there other, like, are you able to find uh, products or forks, as we call them, basically products with, with high uh, difference between the, the price of, of Amazon and on, on Amazon? Sure. I mean, I do know that with the US, it's, it can be a lot harder in terms of the marketplace, um, how, like, sort of they clamp down a lot harder. So you may be gated or branded in, in mm-hmm. categories, which you're not in the UK. So it's, it is easier in that sense because mm-hmm. you're to sell in in like for example a disney product or you know mm-hmm. that sort of thing mm-hmm. or lego 
Um, but then so you are I'll, able to sell Lego or Disney without any yeah, additional. Yeah, for me, I can, I can sell pretty much everything. There are the odd item I come across now and then, mm -hmm. but it is harder. Um, the newer the newer your account is, the hard the more gated you are in yeah. products. But it does get ungated over time, so it's a lot slower now than it used to be. But if you're looking, to, you know, if you're not looking just to make money quick in three months and then disappear, yeah. you know, if you're looking a year and moving on that way, that then you're able to either get auto ungated, which is just you push through the volume and the sales mm -hmm. and you'll get auto ungated, or you can get ungated through wholesalers with, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like minimum ten quantities of, of this and that. Or to get ungated that way. So, what was the question that we were just talking about? Just, um, I guess does this does this business model make sense? Like, are you able to find uh, yes. um, to find enough uh, arbitrage possibilities in in the UK? Um, I feel there is plenty because no matter what the the situation, the scenario, you can always work outside the box and mm -hmm. you know find to what others are doing. Maybe not do that mm -hmm. um, or do half of what they're doing because. If, if too many people do the same thing, it usually will mean that there's not profitable products because everyone's yeah. going the same route and mm -hmm. everyone's competing and mm -hmm. then no one makes any money because they're all undercutting, yeah. looking to make a sale. So I, I normally sort of create a nice hybrid between some sourcing softwares where I'm, I'm giving like 10 deals a day mm -hmm. um, where I'm able to maybe buy a couple of those every day or you know 10 a week or 10 a month. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm able to complement that with like a replenishable side of things, which may be more in groceries or uh, bundles. So mm -hmm. packs of six of one item instead of just one item like you would most of the time, mm -hmm. you bundle them up where you have a lower FBA fee um, because it's only one item shipped, but it's actually six items. Um, and so you're able to make some decent margins that way. Um, but I think there are many different ways if you just really sort of strip it back and look, um, to make some decent money and there's always deals out there it's mm -hmm. just looking and, and trying to just build on your knowledge uh, mm -hmm. and looking for all the new ways that you can sort of do it can you give us an example like for somebody who wants to start all in arbitrage in the UK um, maybe just one example of a site which would be um, like potentially interesting for sourcing yeah so know. sure Sure. So um, it, you know, there's so there's two sort of main ways you can go about doing it. There's sourcing softwares, mm -hmm. which are like automated automated mm -hmm. programs which you go on, like mm -hmm. FBA Wizard or Tactical Arbitrage, mm -hmm. where you type in what you're looking for, uh, what's what web, um, stores you want to look sort of mm -hmm. search, the minimum ROI, the profits, and all those sort mm -hmm. of numbers, uh, and you run a scan, and it, and it basically mm -hmm. compares Amazon and compares uh, the stores. Yeah. And it tries to find matches and then you can go and do your analysis. Do you need to specify a category there or maybe even give it a list of products or um, does it do it on? It, it, it can be as in depth if, as you want in terms of your critique um, or it can be as broad as you want. And it can be, you know, search 10 websites and you don't even type mm -hmm. in your ROIs or anything mm -hmm. and you just see. But then there are um, sourcing services where they give you like online arbitrage deals or fast track FBA where mm -hmm. they give you. Um, 10 deals a day or you can you can use like coupons or tokens to unlock deals um, mm -hmm. that you can't see what the product is sometimes but you can then see the profits um, and mm -hmm. do it that way um, and they're both pros and cons for both um, where like you might not be able to sell some of the products that you're given if you're newer if it's sort of mm -hmm. through the service side because you are given 10 to 15 products a day and you might not be able to sell them all but mm -hmm. again they will actually be p uh, perfect hits um, they mm -hmm. will be a legitimate like purchases and sales mm -hmm. where on, on the software side you can get a lot of um, mismatches mm -hmm. um, because it's only so good as the as the, as the code yeah. behind it isn't mm -hmm. it and and like how are they finding 10, 10 deals a day do they basically use this the, the same software and then um, refine it manually or um, do you have an idea how this, uh, so, this yeah works? I mean most I'm sure they they have access to these and mm -hmm. in the past I believe they would have used these soft um, services mm -hmm. But the way that I understand it now is most of the time they have a team of virtual assistants, which are based mm -hmm. mainly in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, and they, because their time compared to Europe is sort of the previous evening. So now yeah. it'll be like eight o'clock at night or mm -hmm. nine o'clock at night as it could be yeah. in the morning now. Mm -hmm. um, so while we're sleeping, they go away and source products or find the products, mainly yeah. through copy and paste or techniques mm -hmm. they've obviously built up. Okay. And then 
they will go through to a, maybe a senior VA who will then check the deals to make sure they meet certain criteria. Yeah. And then they'll be presented um, mm -hmm. on, the, on the sheet as one of the 10 or one of the 15 or however many you subscribe very, to. Very cool. Okay. And, uh, okay, last question about this. Like, can you give us, an, we know like, some guys are sourcing on Walmart in, in the US, but uh, can you name maybe a couple of big um, uh, online shops in the UK uh, where where you can typically source such things? Like I mean, such, there, yeah, sure, yeah. There are the quite generic or, or uh, well-known companies or mm -hmm. yeah, websites. They could be anything from the Entertainer or the Early Learning Center, Tesco's, Sainsbury's, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Asda, Ocado. Mm -hmm. um, okay, cool. Yeah, um, but then there are others which are sometimes based in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, I think AZ1 Toys or something similar to that. Yeah. Where, you know, sometimes uh, personally, I don't source from these sort of I call them like second tier websites because I, I only I stick to sort of the well known companies over the slightly unknown because you never know. Like with um, like um sort of based um fake products, mm -hmm. it's quite like a big thing on Amazon. Amazon are clamping down, and I want to have as the per almost like the perfect invoice if they ever yes, ask for, of course, yeah. for it rather than some website that no one's ever heard of um mm -hmm. which you can buy and they you know a lot of them will be fine mm -hmm. but i i don't personally go to those yeah okay and what about the invoices like all those shops you named the big the big shops will they give you an invoice yeah sure so you will find that there are times that they because they expect you to be a normal customer Mm -hmm. um you know just a retail customer they do quite, like question what you're actually after mm -hmm. um but if you you know buy, like, legally they have to provide you a vat invoice mm -hmm. um, unless it's up under a certain value but this is more mm -hmm. like accountancy stuff mm -hmm. um and i've not had any problems and what i do normally every week or every month i'll go through my purchase log mm -hmm. um where i've got the order number and all that sort of thing and i'll, I'll batch send um the customer services for each company um, the kind of you know a commercial invoice is what usually what I'll call it, mm -hmm. and they will send through within maybe a week um, all mm -hmm. the commercial invoices that you're buying. I've not personally, not like mm -hmm. I remember, had any issues um, because, as far as I know, they legally have to provide it to you. Okay, so um, I think this is a difference to the US because if you buy in Walmart in the US, for example, they they not they won't provide you an invoice by default, but in the in UK and actually in the rest of Europe as well, they must provide a VAT invoice. And um, if you're buying something, you can provide your, uh, your address, right? And you can just type in your company name there. Um, so you will automatically kind of get an invoice. By the way, in Germany, um, I would say like 99.9% .9 of online shops send you the invoice automatically. Mm. So, so uh, when you're checking out, you're just uh, typing in your uh, shipping address and your invoice address, and then you'll get the invoice by mail or um, it will be in the package. So um, that's, nice, yeah. that's, that's kind of automated. Okay. Okay, cool. And, um, and, and your experience is that those invoices normally, unless you buy from some very small shops that are not known or so, but, but that those invoices are normally accepted. Because like yeah. if you buy in the, at a retail store, I don't know, Amazon actually probably doesn't want sellers to source in retail stores, right? They want, want you to like yeah, yeah. buy from exactly. the manufacturer. Yeah, so exactly. Right? So it's... it's, it's there's no exact science to it. Some, you know, most of the time, 99% of the time, or I've never had to do it myself. So it's very difficult mm -hmm. to give my, my opinion, but I can only go off what I've seen from others that are doing mm -hmm. exactly what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, there's not even with the retail seat receipts from a uh, you know, Tesco saying piece the, the sort of the bigger name ones that I mentioned, mm -hmm. there's been no problems. Um, and with the actual invoices, um, cause you know, when, when I actually look at the detail on them, that it will say, it will state your business name. And it might be from like the Disney store. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be a Disney product. And there's no reason why that wouldn't be accepted because it would yeah. be almost exactly how it would be if you were buying from them directly. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. All right. Um, so um, eventually you moved to wholesale though, or are you still um, doing online arbitrage? I'm getting my sort of foot in the door on that side of things because that is, if you're looking to build um, well, you have two options. A lot of people will get to the online arbitrage side, uh, build up their, their capital, um, mm -hmm. and then they will go either to private label or usually mm -hmm. to wholesale or their hybrid wholesale with an online arbitrage because you can't always get 
the spread of products to sell. It's more obviously bulk. Um, but I'm going to go the wholesale route. And the reason I haven't done it over the years is because I've not needed to. But it is, if you're not looking to just to do it as a, a short term, more of a short term business model, that is the most, sort of most safest and scalable side of things. Because if, once you've got the capital, you're able to make the, the bigger purchases mm -hmm. on the orders and obviously your yeah. margins are higher because you're buying it for cheaper but you've got to have a, a decent chunk to be able to buy multiple lines um and, and at the moment i've not needed to because i've been able to find so many deals as i am um, but it's like any market things change a lot of companies in the uk have been closing down the last couple of years that used to be great for on an arbitrage mm -hmm. and they've and they've, they've literally gone into administration so as the years progress it's you have to be very progressive as well in, yeah. in the way that you're going about it and not just stick to what you know yeah okay so tell us like what is wholesale i mean we kind of know what wholesale is basically you're so you're you're buying products in big quantities from from a supplier or from the manufacturer and then selling them on amazon but like um yeah what what is maybe i don't know if you're familiar with wholesale in the u.s but what is like special about uk or how does this work in uk can you maybe from the business side first can you even get like good deals or are all um brands and manufacturers already on on amazon so i know a lot of people that do wholesale quite um like quite quite well and they've been doing it for years and they'll get you know pallets and pallets every week of different products and it could be something as simple as um like nibia or simple um where they're just bundling it up or some soaps because mm -hmm. um, those sort of things they do sell really well on Amazon but a lot of people do overlook them sometimes it's just because mm -hmm. it's not something you would necessarily go and look for mm -hmm. until you actually sort of see it but there are many people that sell exclusively wholesale and it's relatively I wouldn't say it's easy because a lot of the time they want a business to be VAT registered to mm -hmm. show that you're like a legitimately larger business rather than someone that has 500 pounds in their pocket mm -hmm. um, uh, because they want a sort of a longer term relationship so it's a slightly harder to get into it from the get-go, from the very, very start. Um, yep. But I do know people that have talked about it and they ha there are businesses that supply, supply you um, and they, you can do you know, relatively small orders and you don't have to be VAT registered, but mm -hmm. it's very much um, a closed book in terms of where to go to these wholesalers because a lot of them are not, it's sort of not talked about because if you tell everyone where your wholesaler is, Mm -hmm. you, you everyone will sell that product mm -hmm. um so it's a lot more um secretive in, in that sense than it yeah. is sort of with online arbitrage it's quite open everyone knows where the best places are mm -hmm. um but yeah so so where like um should somebody start if they want to do a wholesale business is it like a product i need to search or a, a, a supplier it's more you do you mean the products to sell um yeah or where yeah, um, it's it, the way that I would go about it is I when I'm doing so I transition the knowledge from online arbitrage. I will always check who is selling the product. Um, so most products that you know it could be three, uh, six pack of soap, uh, mm -hmm. a branded soap or something like that. That's that's the sort of thing or that I would expect to be at a wholesaler mm -hmm. where you buy them individually, but you could you could you could bundle them up and you know, mm -hmm. poly bag them up. Um, but there are brands brands uh, or manufacturers on you know that that do come on the listings and it is their product uh, because they are trying out selling on amazon and i would say if, if the name of the if the brand product you know owner appears on the listing under you know, so i'll always just go to new and search every every, every company um to check that they aren't selling it themselves it, it should usually mean that they are not using amazon as a as a point of sale mm. and they are happy for people to purchase through a distributor or yeah. a wholesaler and do it that way. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's how, where I go about it. And there are, you know, there's, there's many different ways to sort of get into it. There's um, uh, like a wholesale business event that normally is in, in Birmingham every year. And there are magazines that you can subscribe to, which are you know, around that sort of thing. And it's just, it's a lot more, there's a lot more research to do at the beginning, maybe going on Google uh, and mm -hmm. YouTube. Um, but, but it's like um like you know when I started with online arbitrage I didn't know anything but after a month of researching I was able to 
you know, mm -hmm. to get into it. And, and that will be the same for wholesale, but I haven't done enough myself to fully you know, mm -hmm. grasp how to fully do it. So I don't want to you know, go into much more detail. Okay. Okay. I understand. Okay. But basically it's like your first probably decide what niche you'd like to work on and then um, you kind of uh, iterate and, and look at the products and then um, see like who's selling those and uh, in parallel I guess how you would probably look for a retailer for, for a supplier right um, I mean just... the way I would do it or the way I will, I'm going to be doing it is I will look at uh, two, two aspects of it I would look mm -hmm. at seasonality mm -hmm. Um, because when you're doing, when you're, when you're not doing private label, mm -hmm. a lot of it will come on to seasonality, but then there are products that are what I like to call replenishables, meaning you can sell all year round. It could be uh, fairly washing up liquid, you know, everyone mm -hmm. needs to wash the dishes. Yeah. Um, and there could be stuff to do with Valentine's day and all that. So there are sort of two areas. There are seasonality products, maybe toys for Christmas, mm -hmm. and there are more like general brands, maybe groceries, and slash beauty, mm -hmm. uh, soaps, um, shampoos, uh, and those two are the sort of, uh, sort of not necessarily brands as such. Um, as long as they're well known, as long as they're not, um, you know, a, a new third party brand that's come on and mm -hmm. like almost like a private label brand. Um, that's the areas that I'd be focusing on. Okay, very okay, cool. I have um, a couple of more questions. Actually, one about the. the um bundles so you mentioned bundles uh, right so and, and actually when i'm shopping on amazon myself privately i sometimes like for example socks okay, if you shop for socks um i see listings with like three pairs of socks six pairs ten ten eleven pairs of socks something like this of a um well-known brand right and um i think as you said it's it's some retailer basically bundling them together and creating a new listing so um, yeah, is that a valid strategy for online arbitrage or maybe wholesale? Because um, you'd have to basically promote this listing from scratch, right? Yeah, there are, so you, you could, it would be the same principle for online arbitrage and wholesale. Mm -hmm. um, you can, so if there's just, let's just say there's just the one unit of socks, we use socks, mm -hmm. um, and you've, I bought that online arbitrage, so I, bought that through that method, um, but someone could have bought it through wholesale as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's no way of really yeah. comparing because they are the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, you can, the way I like to do it is search, is, is go to the bottom of the Amazon screen. And usually you'll see other products that customers have searched for mm -hmm. and you're able to scroll through. And many of the time it will be that they're not looking for one pair, they're looking for two pairs or four pairs or six pairs or as many as you want to almost go up yeah. and you can then go on and open those pages. And instead of just now selling on one listing, which is the one pair, mm -hmm. you can now see if it's profitable to sell on the two pair, the four mm -hmm. pair, the six pair, the eight mm -hmm. pair, and however many there are. And many times you'll find that the one pair isn't profitable, but yeah. the others are yeah. um, just because of the whole, there's only one FBA mm -hmm. shipping charge. Usually, mm -hmm. yes, there's a slight increase in the percentage of the referral fee, but mm -hmm. it's a little bit less overall for the yeah. sale price. Um, and if there isn't a two pair or four pair, or maybe there is a four pair, but there isn't a two pair, mm -hmm. you can go ahead and, and create the two pair. Um, but then there's a little bit more like, um, PPC involved and, and, yeah. and basic advertising. And, but I do know successful people that do list very similar item and they're able to gain traction. Mm -hmm. Um, just because the others are so popular mm -hmm. that that item also comes up over time. It, it may take a couple of weeks, but actually mm -hmm. they don't actually spend any money getting the rankings better um, and they are able to actually sell that. So you're oh, able wow. to create almost multiple listings from one product. So basically if we like take um, some well, well known brand, which is super popular and then we make a special bundle. Um, you're saying like Amazon will give us credit just because it will kind of understand that it's the same product, but a bundle um, even without us spending um, a lot of money on, on like, product launch like we're doing private label is that yeah is, is i that wish correct? i knew the exact mm -hmm. i mean of course it's, 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 all, it's all like magic but a magic algorithm yeah <laughs> but um but i do i know people that that mm -hmm. create listings or they bundle up listings mm -hmm. which what i mean by that is not not just creating a two pair six pair eight pair or whatever it will be they create they're getting maybe the socks and then maybe they're getting the gloves uh, yeah. and then maybe they're getting the hats 
and then mm -hmm. they're creating a bundle version of a multiple mm -hmm. product listing. And you could even go into that and create, and, they, and it may take a month or it may take a, a little while, but you don't have to spend anything and then it will start selling. Nice. Okay, what do you think about this uh, the following strategy? We take like a super well-known brand, like let's say, uh, let's not name any brands, but I don't know, <laughs> 10 pairs of socks, and then we put a private label uh, keychain or something like this into the package. So uh, it, it's going to be a bundle of 10 pairs of socks and the keychain, uh, which no one else has, just me, right? Because it's a private label. So um, this way we kind of are selling branded products, but we have our own listing, which nobody else can piggyback on. So um, have you ever heard of, of, of this uh, method? I mean, I don't, I don't know. Do you, I understand what you're saying. Um, I know people that when they're looking to get into private label, they don't want to spend loads of money up front and getting something that then they're stuck with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of units because uh, it's their first time. They don't fully understand the grasp of what they're getting into. Um, but to see what maybe is the good, a good product to sell and then progress to full private label with branding and everything is they look for gaps in the market where maybe the, there's not a lot of products in that category. And then they put a generic, um, generic product on that. So let's say socks where it's just mm -hmm. no unbranded. They put the sock on mm -hmm. uh, or however many pairs they want. They call it, they're, they're, they're basically refer to it as their brand or whatever, whatever name they give to it, but it would just be um, that pair of socks. And then if it ranks and sells well, whether you think they will then actually fully brand that product um, mm -hmm. on, and then change the listing. But I don't fully know it. I know that a lot of online arbitrage and stuff like that, you can, it's, even if I create a listing, a lot of people can eventually find the listing as well and do yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Um, so I don't know where exactly that will come in because I don't, as I do piggyback on listings, but I, mm. I don't get involved as much on the creating of the yeah. listings. And okay, seeing got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, then um, one last question. Um, you mentioned VAT and VAT registration. Like to do online arbitrage in, in the UK, uh, do you have to be um, a UK company? So I don't know. I believe as far as I know, you have to, if you're living outside of the UK, mm -hmm. you have to, be a UK company and register for VAT from mm -hmm. day one. Mm -hmm. But if you're in the UK, you can just, you can be a sole trader as well, or a limited okay. company, which are the two mm -hmm. main um, designations that they, mm -hmm. that people usually sign up for beforehand. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you don't, and you, then you can sell up to 85,000 as of today's day, mm -hmm. um, worth of sales, I guess, before you have to do any registering for VAT. But I do mm -hmm. find a lot of foreign sellers that are looking to get involved, they have, you know, there's a bit more of a barrier to entry because they are from day one having to pay VAT where others that are doing it from the UK don't have yeah. to. Um, okay, I understand. So if you like from outside in your sorting products in the UK, you need to pay VAT. But one thing is, of course, the Brexit, because as of now, we're um, UK is still part of uh, the European Union. But the moment, yeah. after the Brexit, um, probably some, something will change. So... Uh, I do know all I know with the with the the way that it's done selling in Europe. So if you sell in the UK, most people automatically sell in Europe because it's part. It's it's almost mm -hmm. like a freebie mm -hmm. uh, at the moment. Um, but the way that they don't start doing all this VAT in all these other cr countries and have to register for these different taxes and stuff, which is a bit of a nightmare. Um, you you store your stock in the UK, and you then you just use your Europe, European fulfillment network. Well, that's what it is at the moment. It may yeah. change. Um, but where people in Europe, you, you do appear on European listings in Germany, France, Italy, Spain, mm -hmm. but it's shipped from the UK. Um, and that, that way you act, it, it counts as a UK sale. Yeah. Even though it actually shows up in the other yeah. countries, it will show up and you'll pay your, your taxes in the UK, right. um, your mm -hmm. VAT, as if it was sold in, because it is, yes. it is in a way sold mm -hmm. from the UK. Yes. Um, yeah. And that's the way everyone, and, and I, I, I think it will, uh, there will be changes, but it will be similar to that. Um, with maybe a couple of extra sort of layers in when we actually go to leave. Yeah. Okay, Luke, so tell us about your coaching and, and about your Facebook group and, uh, and your website. Sure. Well, I, you know, I've got the, oh, I've got a website, um, YouTube and Facebook group. Uh, it's called mm -hmm. Mr. FBA UK, mm -hmm. uh, mainly because I focus on UK sellers because that's what I know. Um, yeah. the link, other... All the links will be in the description, by the way. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, 
And the reason I created them, I did Amazon for about a year, but I always knew I wanted to do extra layers on top um, to, to, to just to build up the whole sort of ethos and the network that I sort of had. Um, and I saw that there were a lot of sellers online uh, promoting what they were doing because I, I learned from some of them, but there was an in-depth um, analysis into different specific areas. It was very broad, um, you know, how to turn £10 into £20. And it wasn't, mm-hmm. you know, it wasn't, and there's lots of sort of how to use a software, but it wasn't how to use that in conjunction with others. So I created a Facebook group in YouTube maybe two years ago, year and a half, uh, and did lo- and, and it was giving content, um, free content. My YouTube has, you know, 50 plus videos of how to do almost everything with online arbitrage, um, which I put through on the Facebook group and everyone there is a big community where we help each other. Um, and, and then a website, if people prefer that route, because sometimes people don't like YouTube and want to see it that way. And then, um, you know, everything can be learned for free just by you know, like most things online, if you spend the time. Um, but I also did coaching on top because some people want one-on-one more intensive, like one hour sessions a week or two hour sessions mm-hmm. a week where I really get into into the specifics of, of how I would go about do things, doing things, which doesn't mean it's the right way because there's many ways to do things. But I know from my experience how I've been successful um, so far, touch wood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but but um, I thought, you know, I, I take on a you know, select amount of clients every, every month because you don't want to be giving away all your secrets to mm-hmm. 100, 200 people. It's like most things. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will then sort of structure their business and get it, into a position similar to how mine would have been at, at that time with mm-hmm. what they've got available to them because everyone's got their own different goals and then I'll structure it ready for them to then go off on their own and and do it that way okay very cool and and like where can we find you so we'll put the facebook uh, group and the youtube uh, link in the description um, in your website but uh, if somebody wants to book your coaching uh, or apply for your coaching, like sure. how would they uh, do it? I mean, there's, there's many different ways that so you can message me directly on Facebook. So if you go mm-hmm. onto the Mr. FBA UK Facebook group, mm-hmm. uh, I'll be in there. I'm normally always posting videos and content and all that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you can just message me directly from there. Lots of people do that. Or you can go onto the website, um, Mr. FBA and mm-hmm. there's a section on there to do with coaching and mentoring. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there's, there's, there's details, PDFs and all that sort of thing where you can mm-hmm. look through and, and you know, see what it is uh, that I do. Okay, cool. Sounds amazing. Thanks so much. Um, it was very, uh, very interesting. And um, I believe also very new for our channel because we didn't have too much content on, on um, UK uh, so far. So uh, thanks so much and uh, good luck with your business, Luke. Thank you. Cheers. Have a great day. Bye-bye. You too. Bye.